Hey everyone, welcome back to Big Strong Book. I'm Reed, and today we are going to be discussing Chapter 29 of the Dragon Bone Chair, Hunters and Hunted. This is the final chapter in Part 2 of the book. So, this chapter begins right where Chapter 27 ends, with Simon, uh, Maria, and Binabic ambushed right when they get to die Chikiza by Ingen Jagger and his men. And right away, um, they're kind of just, you know, Simon and Maria as they're, they're carrying Binabic and Kataka's going with them. They're trying to get away as fast as they can from these men, from Ingen Jagger and Baron Heeferth, Hef uh, these men that are after them. And this is obviously a very uh, terrifying moment for them uh, and they're able to uh, get out a little bit of the um, they're able to get out a little bit of the knife uh, as they as they dole the knife uh, yeah he eased uh, Simon eased the arrow out uh, through the wound made by its entry as flesh as fresh blood welled around it but as they are right before they um right before they get this um this thing out um as they're running away there's a bridge and these men fall around it but the bridge collapses and so many of the men that are after them kind of fall into the river. And of course, Simon and Maria, they're thinking to themselves, they're like, what, you know, what caused this? Was it the Sithi? But Simon notes to Maria, he says, the Sithi live a long time. They're not necessarily dead. You know, what, you know, that there were spirits that, that conjured this. And so eventually um, they, kind of Simon creates a harness and puts Binabic on it again. Binabic is, he's still alive, but he is not in great health at all. Um, but then they, they reach, they, they reach the top of the hill and they, they think that they see, um, Naglamond or what, what could be Naglamond. But as they keep going, they hear men's voices coming towards them. And Simon makes a torch because even though Mario's like, well, won't that lead them to us? Simon says, no, but we'll have something to fight with. And right as he's coming down, a, a giant comes down on top of them. And he, it's just, it's, it's so great what, or how, Tad Williams describes a giant. He just says the giant opened its mouth and thundered. That was the only possible word for the echoing rumble that came out and lunged at Simon. And as these men come around and the giant kind of swings them around, uh, truly of this giant. And then a dark shape comes out from kind of behind Simon and Maria and a figure on a horse and slays uh, the, the giant. And Simon realizes it's Joshua and he pitches forward and then he wakes up and he's in this tunnel he realizes that these tunnels become stone walls as they come out outside and he sees the night sky and he realizes, Simon realizes that they have made it, that they are in Naglamond. And so that is the end of the chapter. So I, I knew that this, uh, this chapter review would be quite short uh, given that this is an action packed chapter, but we get more, there is, in terms of like the character development within this chapter, we get a lot of arguing between Simon and Maria because they're that this is in many ways I mean both literally and metaphorically this is the climax for their journey thus far 
Binnebig has been their guide. Binnebig has been, in many respects, their rock. He has been the point of security for both Simon and Maria. But now, Binnebig is quite literally on his back. You know, he was pierced by an arrow. So now it is up to Simon and Maria. And there's an interesting point where, you know, kind of before Simon creates his torch, that uh, it says, this is page 465, Simon too was so scratched and blistered and scuffed that he wanted to lie down and weep. A different Simon, the Simon that had lived his castle boy life in the labyrinthine hayholt, would have lain down. He would have sat on a stone and demanded dinner and sleep. And we know this to be true. He was somewhat different now. He still hurt, but there were other things that were more important. Still, there was no good to be done by crippling them all. Simon has changed. We knew that coming into this chapter. We knew his willingness to help others had, in his perspective of, of about a, a great many things had changed. But now it is cemented. He's going to stay and fight. Just like when he creates that torch and he's like, all right, we're going to use it as good as we can. And even with the giant, Simon is right there with him. Simon has changed for the better. And it's, it's fitting that he reaches kind of a sort of personal goal, a personal fulfillment, a positive change. And it's almost as if that positive change within his character is rewarded as they finally reach Naglamond at the end of the chapter. All that struggle has now been rewarded. They have reached the point that they are going to reach and part two ends and we are left now right at the doorstep of the final part of the book. And so that, that, that's very fun. So I don't think I have any real spoiler things. I think spoilerish things that might be pertinent to this chapter, I believe I mentioned in a couple of the previous videos. So I'm just gonna kind of leave it as this chapter leaves, just on the cusp of whatever may come next in the story. Uh, so if you guys have read chapter 29 and like me are just at the last part of this book, let me know what you think and I will see you guys next time.